Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chandler Ainsley and I am easily influenced. Now, if you missed the first video, this series is all about me being susceptible to marketing, internet or otherwise. In the first video, I decided to take book recommendations from TikTok that had just been kind of like languishing on my Goodreads TBR. And uh, in this video, I'm going to be reading books that Target made me buy. So recently I was at a Target that I don't normally frequent and I decided that I was gonna stop by their book section. But with the current pandemic, I haven't been to a proper bookstore in quite a while. So I rely on Target to fuel my book related impulse purchases. <laughs> and what did this lovely Target put in my lap? This picture, behold the beauty of all of these pink and red books. Never before at a Target had I seen quite so many romances in one place. My Target usually just gives me one small town romance and the hating game and says, here, have at it. But this Target really answered my prayers. She knew that I was in need of a good romance and she gave me not one, but five beautiful pink and red romances. And you can bet your ass I threw all five of those into my cart and swiped my red card for an additional 5% off. So in this video, I'm gonna be reading these five books and I'm gonna see if my impulsiveness paid off. So let me briefly tell you guys about the five books that I picked up and then we can get into the vlog portion of this video. So first up, we have Ties That Tether by Jane Agaro. This is one that I'm super excited about. It is about our heroine who is Nigerian and she ends up falling for a white boy, much to the chagrin of her family, I'm sure. And it's going to be kind of about the exploration of her kind of figuring out what she wants out of life and if she wants to kind of listen to what her family wants for her as well. So super excited about this one. The cover is stunning and I'm super excited, obviously, to read this. Next up, we have The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. This is a book that was already kind of on my radar, but I just have not picked it up. I don't know if it's the cover or what. Something about these like, I don't know, Uncanny Valley drawings of people on the cover. It's a little strange for me, but I do like kind of the bright neon-ness of it. Uh, but this story is about two kind of unlikely roommates who don't know each other before they become roommates. And I believe our hero is in the adult film industry, which I think could be super interesting to read about. So excited to get to this one. Next up, we have Pretending by Holly Bourne. This is one that was not previously on my radar, but I have read a couple of other books by Holly Bourne in the kind of young adult age segment and I really, really liked those. So I'm curious to see what she does in an adult contemporary romance. But this one I think is about our main character, April, and she kind of pretends to be someone else, like a cooler version of herself as she online dates. And I think it's about her kind of reconciling this personality and persona that she's putting on with her real life desires and her real life personality. So this should be an interesting read. I haven't read anything like this before. And I think that this could be an interesting look at kind of like online dating. Next up, we have Last Hang Standing by Lauren Ho. I am super excited for this one. I mean, first off, the cover is giving me all of the crazy rich Asian vibes, which I'm adoring. And this one is about our main character, Andrea, who is Chinese Malaysian. And again, much to the disappointment of her family, she is unmarried at 33. So this book, I believe, is about her trying to kind of like find a match or maybe her family trying to find a match for her. I didn't read like super into the synopsis, let's be real. But I'm excited to get to this one and kind of get to the bottom of like what the story is truly about. I've heard sort of mixed things about this one, so I'm going in with a bit of hesitance, but I'm pretty thrilled to read this one. And then lastly, we have Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey. This is one that a little bit scared to go into, mostly because the first book in this series, Fix Her Up, was not a success for me. There was something a little bit strange and like infantilizing about the brother's best friend romance aspect to it, but this one is a little bit different. It is kind of a play on the whole like fixer upper show type thing. I don't know a ton about the two characters in this book, but I'm excited to see what goes on. I think it might be sort of like an enemies to lover situation. I could be totally wrong. I didn't, again, like super read the synopsis, but <laughs> excited to give this one a go and hopefully have it. Tessa Bailey redeemed for me. But that is it. Those are the five books that I'm going to be reading for this video. I am super excited about it. I hope you guys are excited to go along with this ride and this journey with me. But uh, without further ado, let's get into the vlog portion of this video. Okay, I'm like 70 pages into Tools of Engagement. I don't know why I decided to pick up this one first. It just felt like the right move. And honestly, I'm really enjoying it. And that's why I wanted to update you guys now instead of at 100 pages like I thought I was going to. There's just something about this that is proceeding in a very flawless way for me. I don't know how else to put it. It's just good. So the two main characters in this story are Bethany and Wes and Bethany is older than Wes. She's like 31 and he's 24. He has recently come to Long Island to take care of his niece because his half sister basically abandoned his niece or was like, hey, can you come and watch her for a little while? And you know, he said, yeah, sure, I'll come do that. And then he just hasn't heard back from her. So in the meantime, he is working at Bethany's family's construction company. And Bethany is this like kind of high 
high powered house flipper, I guess. She doesn't really do the construction side of things. She just stages the homes and it's always been her mission to be able to finally get to flip her own home, not her own home, but flip a home by herself essentially without the help of her brother, Stephen. And Stephen is not really like excited about the prospect of Bethany getting to do this herself. He definitely kind of looks down on her, but just doesn't think that she can do it. And I think that that might be a uh, familiar sentiment for a lot of people having like parents or family members not necessarily <laughs> believing in you, which can be really frustrating. So Bethany gets the permits to this really dilapidated old house and her mission is to flip it. And Wes used to work for Stephen, but he volunteers to work with Bethany because he is really into Bethany and he's like, you know what? She needs help. I'll do it. And that's sort of how the story has kicked off. We get this really playful banter between Wes and Bethany and really early on too, we get really great characterization. I've just been so impressed by it, to be honest. I think part of it is probably that Bethany to me is a character who I find <laughs> intensely relatable. At the beginning of the story, I was kind of unsure if she was going to be someone I liked because she seemed a little bit irritating, but the more that you kind of find out about her, the more you understand she's kind of a perfectionist and people expect certain things from her and she wants to, I don't know, make sure everything goes just right. She definitely has that older sister vibe to her and as an older sister, like I just feel like I can relate to her a lot. Hearing her talk about her relationships with men previously and how men fall into just like a few different categories and she's never had a successful relationship. I don't know. I just, I, I like her and I'm rooting for her and I really want her to be able to open up to Wes. So I'm liking it. And I'm very curious to see how this house flipping situation goes. Already we're kind of given hints that it might not be quite as seamless as she wants it to be. On the back of the book, so this isn't really like a spoiler, there is kind of hints that this is going to turn into a competition between her brother Stephen and herself. See who can flip home the best because Stephen is currently working on a flip house himself. I don't know. I'm very interested to see like how that dynamic works and also just curious to see how Wes handles continuing to take care of his niece with his responsibilities at this you know flip situation there's just something about it that I'm liking I will say <laughs> Tessa Bailey is an interesting one to read because when you pick up her books you get covers like this and you're like okay um cute excited for it you read the synopsis and you think oh that's fun like playful romantic comedy and then you read it and honestly it is kind of off-putting how I don't want to say how horny everyone is but like kind of I feel like there's a lot of clenching that's going on, a lot of um, turgid members and stuff very early on, even them having like very little sexual contact. I think it does kind of help to establish the characters as very attracted to each other in addition to the banter, but it is kind of a bit much if you're not used to that. So just something to be aware of. Other update, I have decided that the way that I'm going to judge if a book is good or not is whether or not I want to take off the Target sticker and keep this book after I read it. That's going to be the marker of a good book. And so far, she's peeling up in the corners. So I think this might be a keeper. I mean, I still have like a while to go, so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I did like fix her up at the beginning and then it kind of just went downhill with all of the like two bats, baby girl talk. So I don't know, fingers crossed that this one like stays good. Um, also, I'm using a different camera for my vlog portions of this video compared to all my other videos. So let me know if this is a little too high quality. To be honest, I do think that cameras can be too high quality sometimes. Like sometimes I, I don't need to see everybody's pores when they're doing vlog clips. So I don't know if this is like not the best, let me know. But I, I'm assuming at least the audio quality will be better than my normal uh, videos. Honestly, my G7X, like as much as I like this thing and as much as this is like the camera darling of booktube, I just, I don't know if I've dropped it one too many times, but the autofocus is super loud now and I feel like you can hear it in every clip, so. It's, it's a little different with this one, maybe. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'll probably update you guys once I get 50% into this one, but so far so good. Okay, so I'm on my lunch break and I had to update you guys on tools of engagement. I got to the 50% mark last night and <laughs> I'm loving this. I keep saying this in videos, like I've not fallen for a romance this hard in a long time, but like I fucking mean it with this book. It is so good. I feel like having just read The Hating Game, I'm not saying these books are similar, but I am saying that I feel like this is going to take the place of The Hating Game in terms of like a favorite traditionally published romance. It's kind of like quirky and fun. Um, I just, this is good. This is good shit. Okay, so I don't want to talk too much about the plot, but we've kind of started getting into the fixer upper like flip situation. And we really get to see kind of the cracks in Bethany's facade a little bit more and how, 
you know, she is this very stressed out, anxious person. This has, in my opinion, a really incredible anxiety rep. It doesn't specifically say that she has anxiety or OCD or anything like that. I would say she probably has anxiety though, just from the actions that she's taking. She's very particular. She doesn't want to look like she's not tough and like she doesn't have it all together. And I don't know, I just find that intensely relatable. And just getting to see her like fully trust someone or like start to fully trust someone is really, really great. I think something that I didn't point out before is that Wes in this book is someone who is so perceptive. And I think that's something that is so underrated in romance. Romance. I feel like so often we have these guys and these girls who just don't communicate well and I totally understand that communication is a really difficult thing but when you have someone who is just so intuitive and perceptive and can really pick up on someone's cues quickly I just there's something to be said for that there's something so lovely about it and Wes anytime he senses that Bethany is kind of struggling like she does in the kind of pilot episode of the show he helps her so much and he helps make situations more lighthearted and points out when things are you know in not as bad as they seem, I guess. So for instance, there's a scene in this book where there's like a wedding, it's Georgie and Travis's wedding. And after the wedding, Bethany is stressing so much about whether, did, you know, did people enjoy the food? There were so many leftovers, that kind of thing. And he points out that the food was good and that there was an open bar and everybody was happy. And just hearing it from someone else really reassured her and made her feel so much better about the situation. And as someone who struggles with anxiety, sometimes having someone tell you those things, even though you know them yourself, can make you feel so much better about, you know, the thoughts going on in your head. And um, I'm just I'm loving that so much. I just feel like the chemistry they have is so undeniable. It is so awesome. And the one like sexy scene that we've already had was so intense and it was so hot and I really, really enjoyed it. We don't have that like baby girl thing, but there is sort of an emphasis on the age gap element. I mean, it's not a huge age gap. Also, I I could be wrong, but I feel like they switch the ages in this book. I feel like at the beginning they said Wes was 24 and now they're saying he's 23 and she's 30. Regardless, it's like a seven year age gap. And um, yeah, I just, I I like it. It's working for me. I, I mean, if you didn't like Fix Her Up, I don't know that you'll love this one. I didn't like Fix Her Up primarily because of the infantilization of Georgie and I didn't like the baby girl thing. That's not present in this book. But if you don't like how raunchy and intense the sex scenes are in Fix Her Up, you definitely won't like this book because it does still have that. But I'm liking it. I think it kind of pushes the envelope when it comes to traditionally public romance and it's just doing everything right for me like I'm having such a good time with this so I'm telling you all of this now because I want to read this on my lunch break <laughs> I am so excited to just dive in and finish this I'll probably only update you guys one other time for this book because you know I'm, I'm trying not to spoil the plots of these I want you to definitely pick this one up and hopefully pick up some of the other ones so I'm not gonna spoil you know too much but so far this is fantastic and like might be a favorite romance of this year I don't know that's really bold it's only like February 2nd but I love this <laughs> all right it is Oh, I actually have no idea. It is 4.28 p.m. My new jacket that I bought off of a targeted Instagram ad just got delivered. And I just finished Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey. Did I cry? Yes. Am I going to remove the sticker? Also, yes. I'm giving this shit five stars. Okay, also, wow. Sticker residue. I'm not a fan. There's really not much more that I feel like I can say about this book that I haven't already said. I just feel like these two characters were so perfect for each other, and I felt like the conflicts were very realistic that had occurred in this book. It was really, like, good. I don't know what else to say. I think you will know pretty early on if this is something that's going to work for you. I think if Bethany is someone who you can't connect with, this is going to be a romance you probably will have a hard time reading. I personally loved it. I felt like she was a painfully relatable character and I just loved Wes. I just, I don't know, I I'm just really surprised by this book. I think I said it in the intro, but I just like wasn't sure if this was going to be something I would enjoy since I didn't like Fix Her Up, but I mean, it's a five-star read. There's really not much more I can say. And I definitely think this is gonna be my favorite book that I read this month, if not a book that winds up on my best of the year list. Like this was so good. And I guess it shouldn't be that surprising because I read the acknowledgements in the front of this book and she says that she tends to save her favorite couple for last. And I think that's so evident when you read this, like the care that she put into writing this. It was just perfect from start to finish. and. I really don't have any critiques for this book. I just felt like it was pretty pitch perfect for me. So honestly, like first book so far so good. Like I'm having a good time. I don't know. I figured like this would be my least favorite and I could get it out of the way, but this totally like took me by surprise. So now I'm very excited to get into the rest of the books for this video. So I think the next one that I'm going to try is going to be Last Tang Standing. It's upstairs. Like I don't have it in my hands, <laughs> but in the next clip, you'll see me with it. Uh, we can get into reading it. I think I'll probably update you guys once I'm like 50 pages in kind of like I did for 
tools of engagement. Oh, I was going to say, all of my friends on Goodreads have this on their to be read shelf. Not a single person that I am friends with on Goodreads has read this. Go fucking pick this up. Pick it up. <laughs> I'm back with a slightly better lens for vlogging and I am 80 pages into Last Hang Standing by Lauren Ho, which I thought we could talk about. Um, I ended up actually picking this up on audio today because I kind of have a headache and I didn't really want to like words on page it, you know what I mean? And the listening experience has been excellent. So I think if you're going to pick the story up, I would recommend the audiobook version, but this story is very interesting so far. I'm actually very much enjoying this. It is about our main character, Andrea, as she sort of navigates familial expectations and dating. And for some reason, whenever I read the synopsis of this book, I was expecting it to be a lot more serious in tone, but the description on the back says Crazy Rich Asians meets Bridget Jones's Diary, and that could not be more accurate if it tried. It's giving me very much Crazy Rich Asians vibes, but the actual way that it's written in this sort of like diary format, having a really close first person approach, um, you know, because it's like Andrea's diary basically, has been really fun to read about, I'm not gonna lie. And it brings levity to a kind of more serious topic, I feel like, because familial expectations are kind of hard hitting, I would say, especially when you feel like you have to kind of give up some of the freedoms or the things that you want to kind of impress your family or to make them happy. That has been a very interesting exploration thus far. So this book kind of opens up with Andrea going to a Chinese New Year celebration with her whole family, extended family, aunties, uncles, etc. And the kind of matriarch of the family points out that, you know, Andrea is going to be the last one basically to get engaged. This is super shocking to Andrea because previously she thought that her lesbian cousin, you know, wouldn't ever get married married, but her cousin is recently engaged to a man, which is, you know, pretty shocking because her cousin is gay, but she's also kind of hit with the fact that, wow, like my lesbian cousin is getting married and I'm not. That is shocking. So Andrea is feeling very low and is feeling a little bit pressured because, you know, she wants to be accepted by her family. Her mom has been giving her this immense pressure too. It's not just, um, you know, her aunt. And she's feeling this pressure hardcore because she's 33. And again, she's not engaged. She's not married. She doesn't have anyone. And it doesn't matter that she has, you know, career success as a lawyer if she doesn't have these other kind of markers of a success. So after she attends the Chinese New Year celebration, she's like, okay, I need to get my shit together because my cousin was able to bag like a really fancy, rich banker dude. And I should be able to do that too, especially since I'm actually into men. So she ends up going on a couple of dating apps and just kind of playing the field a little bit. She's a little bit naive, I guess, in the fact that like she doesn't really know how dating apps work. One of her friends um, has to help her set up her profiles. She's had some kind of mixed luck so far, but it is interesting seeing kind of what she's looking for and if this is something that she actually truly wants. Uh, she ends up meeting kind of a younger guy at a bar who she's into, but she's like, this couldn't work. He's way too young for me. He's like 10 years younger than her. She also has this sort of like playful banter with a colleague at work named Suresh, who she sees as competition. And I'm wondering if that's going to be kind of like, you know, a romance that comes to light, but it's very interesting. And I don't really know where the story is going at this 80 page mark, but I'm curious to see if Andrea ends up kind of going the direction of, you know, continuing to online date and maybe ends up, you know, following for her coworker instead, or if this is going to be a story of her just kind of rejecting those wishes, you know, the wishes of her family and kind of doing her own thing and um, accepting that she is successful in her own right. So I'll be curious to see what ends up happening in this book. Uh, but so far so good. I really, like I said, I'm appreciating the narrative style. I think it's really fun. And I think that the audiobook narrator really brings these kind of like diary entries to life, which has been super fun. And I'm probably just going to continue listening even when my headache goes away because it's just been a lot of fun. So I have no idea where this book's going. It could, you know, be a five-star read. It could be a two-star read. At this point, I really don't know because I don't know much about the plot, but... I'm having a good time. I feel like the setup was good and I'm really appreciating kind of the cultural aspects of this story. At first I was kind of like, why does she feel so much pressure from her family? Like she kept driving home that fact over and over again. And I was like, okay, but why? And she does end up explaining that too. And so it makes a lot of sense. And it is, it's just, it's interesting to learn about a culture that is, you know, quite different than mine. So overall, this is really good. I'm gonna keep reading. I'll probably update you guys at like the 50% mark when I have more of an impression on kind of where the story is going. Okay, so I just finished A Last Hang Standing by Lauren Ho and Sadly, I don't think I'm going to be removing the Target sticker on this one. This was not an unenjoyable read. I just don't think that it accomplished what it was setting out to accomplish, at least I think. This is definitely not what I would consider a romance. There's definitely a romance at the heart of the story, but it doesn't conclude in a way that was like super satisfying, especially like if you were going into this for romance, like I don't think you're going to be happy with what happens. And then on top of that, I just feel like there really wasn't much growth on the part of Andrea. I think this book is like a hard one to recommend because 
sometimes characters, and honestly, I felt this way about tools of engagement. When you have a main character who is so specific and has such a bold personality type, I think it can be a little off-putting for romance readers because a lot of the time you just kind of want to self-insert or you want someone who is just like generically nice and pleasing. You're definitely not going to get that with Bethany in tools of engagement or Andrea in this book. Andrea is definitely very, very immature and at times naive. It makes for a fun reading experience in my opinion, but I know and I can definitely see how a lot of people would be turned off by that. And unfortunately, she just doesn't really grow in the story either. So it's like you don't really have the strong romance component, but you also don't have this being like a true self-development book. She does end up with someone at the end of the book. She does make some strides, you know, in the direction she wants to go in. But I feel like overall, it's not really strong in execution. And, and that sounds bad. I mean, I do think in some ways, like this book was successful in being super entertaining and in telling a story that I don't think has necessarily been told before, which is like obviously really great. I just, I'm a little bit sad that this didn't take like a strong enough approach to kind of any of the components. There were a lot of different components to the story. There were friendships, family relationships, family expectations, romance, career. Like there was a lot going on. I just wish it had kind of not stuck to one thing, but that one of the things had been really strong at the end to where I could more strongly recommend this book, you know? Because I know not everybody is like looking for a really strong romance. Some people like kind of the more chick lit, not self-development, but you know, character growth type novels. And, and this didn't have that either. So I don't know. Mixed feelings. It was enjoyable. And honestly, like I wouldn't hesitate to listen to this audiobook again. So that's like part of the reason why I don't think I'm going to be keeping this particular, you know, physical copy of this book. But I think if I were to rate it, I would rate this book three stars. It was like honestly fun and I don't regret reading this book. I just wish that there had been something just more there. And honestly, if it were me, I would have preferred that to be the romance because I did like the two characters and how they ended up together. But I just wanted more there, especially at the end. So that's sort of where I'm at. And I honestly don't know what I want to read next. I'm kind of thinking The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. I'm just kind of in the mood for something lighthearted again. And this one seems like pretty fun and lighthearted, so fingers crossed that it is. Once I get, you know, 100 pages in, I'll update you guys and let you know how it is. But so far, honestly, I'm having fun with this video, even if not every book of the two books, well, um, has been five stars. You know what I mean? So. Am I too lazy to go downstairs and get my copy of The Roommate by Rosie Dannon? Yes. I'm 100 pages in and I think that I am enjoying it. I was a little touch and go there for a second at the beginning because I was sort of unsure about our main character and like the setup for this book. But now that I'm seeing the chemistry between our hero and heroine, I think I do like this book. So how to, how to, how to explain? Our main character, Clara, has been in a very sheltered position for a lot of her life. She is the daughter of some kind of socialites in Connecticut. I think her grandfather was like mayor or governor or senator or whatever. And you know, people know who she is. And her brother is sort of like a troublemaker and she has to be like the good one as a result. She is just extremely type A, extremely sheltered, and she has never really left home. I mean, like she went to school in New York for a few years, like for college, but she's never really like struck out on her own and done her own thing. And she decides one day, I guess, right after she graduates, that she's gonna go live in LA with a childhood friend who she's had a crush on forever. He's like, hey, you can crash at my place. You can rent a room. It'll be like a cool situation. And she decides that she's gonna jump at it because she's had a crush on him forever. Unfortunately, this guy, Everett, is actually gonna go on tour and he's renting out his own bedroom. Clara has to live with a guy that she has never met before, kind of navigate that roommate situation. Her roommate, Josh, is a really cool laid back guy and he is in the adult entertainment industry. And it's interesting seeing kind of the juxtaposed um, personalities and like jobs and stuff that both of them have and how they kind of play off of each other. That's I think what I've been enjoying the most is seeing their interactions and seeing her candor, I suppose. I was expecting since she is this sort of like very, very, very type A, like laminated her packing list kind of person, I was scared that she would be a little irritating and like closed off. And she is a little irritating, but I I do like that she <laughs> has been very straightforward with Josh this entire time. Like, I think it's been fun to watch. There's a scene where she ends up finding out that he is in the adult entertainment industry. He doesn't actually tell her. So she decides to like go home and do research and kind of see what Josh does. And whenever she is viewing the video, he walks in on her. And instead of just like trying to play it off, she just straight up tells him what she's been doing. And it created just this like super funny scenario and it led to some steamy times. I like that. I like that while she is not a character that I would normally be into, she is surprising me. And I like that. It's kind of giving me new girl vibes. I'm not gonna lie. You've got like two people who don't know each other but are forced to live together. Obviously, it's just like two people, not like a whole group of people, but it's kind of giving me similar vibes. Like she is much more uptight than Jess, but she does have like 
some of some of the same quirks. So far so good. The one steamy scene that we've had in the first hundred pages I thought was like pretty hot. It was more of an experimental scene if that makes sense. I, I don't want to like spoil it and get into the details but I enjoyed it. It was fun and I'm excited to see how their relationship develops primarily because we've seen hints that Josh has been unsatisfied with his relationships in the past. He's in a situation right now where he's kind of forced to be in close proximity to his ex because he performs with his ex. Apparently his ex didn't give him the emotional intimacy that he was really craving and he talks about in his internal dialogue watching romantic comedies after they would like have sex basically because he was like craving that love. I think we're gonna see everybody getting their needs fulfilled. I was actually just explaining to Hayden today um, after we got dinner how I like my romances to be and like what I look for in a romance. I think he was asking me that specifically like what makes a good romance and I was like well it's different for everybody for sure but I think to me the like hallmark of a perfect romance is having two people who complete each other and I don't think that you need another person right but someone who kind of fills in the gaps where your personality is lacking fulfills certain needs for you. That's what I'm looking for in a romance. So I'm getting hints of that. So I'm hoping that it continues on at a path that I am excited about. Moving my hands a lot. I feel like my hands look really big in this camera, but uh, I'm going to continue reading. I'll probably update you guys like the halfway point. I am on track to finish this video on time. I don't think I said, but it is March 19th and I'm posting this on the 21st. So okay, the lighting and the quality in here is not great. So I'm going to keep it short, but I am a little over halfway into this book. I think it's 300 pages and I'm 173 pages into The Roommate. I decided to update you guys at this point because I just hit another steamy scene and I have to say this book definitely definitely brings the flavor and the sexiness in a way that's like sex positive and very fun. I'm really liking the interactions that Josh and Clara have had. The only complaint that I have so far really is that I want there to be more interpersonal interactions between the two of them. It's not that they haven't interacted on a personal level, like they've watched movies together and stuff, but I just want there to be more of a romantic connection. And I know that we're going to get there, but I guess I was just looking for a little bit more of that at the 50% mark, you know, like I was hoping we would get some of that before this point, but I do like them together and you can tell that they really enjoy each other's company. So I'm not upset at anything that's happened. I'm interested to see where the plot of this book goes. I don't want to share too much. The two of them decide to kind of work together on a business venture that I think is very interesting. And I do like the kind of commentary we've had about the sex work industry, like, you know, specifically in adult entertainment. I think it has been interesting and I think we're going to see some more of that as this book continues, which I really appreciate. I think I've read other books that have had male adult film stars um, as the hero and they haven't gone this far as to kind of address some of the issues that, you know, people in this industry face and how the conditions can be, you know, toxic in certain circumstances and how some, you know, production companies don't necessarily treat people the way they should be treated. So I don't know. I'm liking that aspect of it too. I'm learning things that I didn't already know about this industry. So I appreciate that. Clara is definitely growing on me too. I mean, sorry, that was kind of a weird transition. I'm just trying to <laughs> share some more things that I liked, but I am enjoying Clara's character more. I do think that she is becoming more relatable in a sense. I like that she is getting to be more sexually liberated as this book goes on. I think it's something that perhaps a lot of women could relate to, not having experience with their bodies necessarily and, you know, learning as time goes on with like the right partner and also self-exploration. So I appreciate that. I'm gonna finish this book. I'll love to you guys when I'm done, but uh, so far I'm having a good time. Well, hello. It is Saturday, March 20th at like 5.30 and I just finished The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. Probably should have finished this earlier. I got kind of a slow start to the day. Uh, I got my hair cut, rocking the curtain bangs. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm enjoying these books slowly. I'm savoring them. Smart girl that I am. I did check out uh, <laughs> the next two books in audio format. Okay, why? How come every time I film, they decide to get on the bed? Anyway, this is super chaotic. Let's talk about this book. Let me finish up this clip and then we can move on to the next book. I think I'm gonna give this four stars. I do think I'm going to remove the target sticker because I enjoyed this. I thought it was fun. I don't know that this is like life-changing or like the most amazing romance ever. I definitely think there were sweet elements. I did end up really liking Josh, even though his name is Josh. Have I talked about this in a video or just like on Goodreads? I cannot stand that every fucking romance hero's name is Josh. Why? I don't think I know any Joshes in real life. I digress. I think my only real issue with this book is that the romance just didn't develop in a very satisfying way. I touched on it in the last clip, but I was wondering, you know, at the 50% mark and on, if we were going to get like a really full flesh developed romance, that just wasn't the case. And I think that's kind of par for the course for traditionally published romance. That sounds like kind of shady. I mean, I love traditionally published romance, or at least I'm starting to love it more.
more than I used to uh, but I think that's like one of the issues that I have with it. They have these like quirky tropes and they try to do a whole lot in a really short amount of time. Ultimately that doesn't always work. There were some things that I think were left out here. Yeah there were definitely really steamy sex scenes so if you want that that's in here um, and I do think that you know Clara and Josh were cute together. I just don't think that we got enough of the interpersonal interactions between them. The I love you part just seemed a little bit rushed to me as well um, and then on top of that I think that some of the more ambitious plot things and kind of commentary on sex work and on the adult film industry kind of was lacking. They tried to pick it back up at the end and it just didn't really ultimately lead really anywhere. It felt lazy and also I think the conflict with Clara not wanting to be the public face of this project or whatever. I don't want to like spoil what the project is. It, it didn't really go anywhere either. Like we, we thought her parents were going to be mad at her but she barely has any like interactions with her parents at all throughout the story. So I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I wasn't convinced by the epilogue either. That sounds, I know I'm saying a lot of negative things. Um, I did enjoy this book. I did think it was fun and I do think there's definitely a place for this on my shelf. I just don't think this is like a new all-time favorite, which is why I'm giving it four stars. Again, it was like more developed romance-wise than Last Tank Standing, but it still wasn't like perfect. So anyway, enjoyed this, had a good time reading it, and I'm glad I read it because it is, you know, such a popular title, but I'm ready to move on to my next book. And again, I don't have the next book with me because I'm too lazy to go and get it, but I think I'm going to start in on Pretending by Holly Bourne. Again, I think I said it in the intro to this video, but I'm excited for this one because the one like young adult title that I've read by her was one of my favorite young adult contemporaries ever. So I'm curious to see what she does with an adult title. Kind of worried because the synopsis sounds a little bit odd, but I'm hoping that she does does something fun with it. But I'm gonna get 100 pages in and I will keep you posted. A lot has happened since we last spoke. It is Sunday at around 11.30 and yesterday I read in its entirety Pretending by Holly Bourne. I hated this like a lot. Like I really really disliked this book and I didn't want to come on here yesterday and like complain about this book because I think that this could be potentially helpful for somebody out there and the topics that are discussed in this book are not things that I've personally been through so I felt like it was unfair of me to come on here and complain about this book if that makes sense. But I am going to be as honest with you guys as I can because I think that's important and I don't know, I, I want people to know what this book is before they go into it or unknowingly pick this up in Target. Where to begin? This book has a really, really um, heavy emphasis on sexual assault. Our main character has been sexually assaulted. There is on page memories of that, kind of graphic, and the whole story really revolves around her trauma. So I felt a little bit cheated and a little bit upset that that was not mentioned really anywhere on the synopsis that I can tell. She says that like she hasn't had any good dates with people and like she's going to pretend to be, you know, a manic pixie girl next door to get men. And that's just like not a good description of this book. Like that's just not what this is. It is about our main character, April, who has been assaulted and she has had really bad luck dating men because they don't seem to care very much about her or her experiences. And as a result, she kind of hates all men. She decides that she is going to catfish men instead and to pretend to be someone she's not and maybe she will find the luck that she is hoping to have with men. The the tone and the way that the topics were handled in this book were, were deeply unsettling to me. It kind of reminded me of that movie with Carrie Mulligan. Um, I haven't actually seen it, but it seems to have a similar vibe to it. There was nothing in this book that felt heartwarming to me or that felt triumphant in any way. I felt like our main character didn't grow at all or learn anything. I felt like she still hated men at the end of this book and she just found the one good man or the one man that was okay with her catfishing. I don't I don't think that's a great message, honestly, that you should lie and, and, and cheat your way to a relationship and hopefully that person will forgive you. I don't know. I don't purport to know what it's like to, um, be assaulted or what the aftermath of that would look like or how you, how the best way to handle that is. I just know that like the way that she handled what happened to her was not healthy and I think she realizes that you know maybe a little bit at the end of the story but it was really really hard to read and the reviews for this book are pretty mixed. A lot of people were also saying that this book is almost identical to this author's like previous work. I don't know I'm I am I, I don't even know how to feel about this book, to be honest. Like, it made me feel icky the entire time I was reading it. And I mean, I think that's part of what, how you're supposed to feel. But I think I, I think what I'm trying to say is that I just don't understand who the audience for this book is. If you're looking for, like, a funny, tropey romance, this absolutely is not that. This really is not a romance, in my opinion. And I think if you're someone who has been through what this character has been through, this could be really, really triggering to you. But I don't think it would be something that would be, like, cathartic and healing to read either. So, like, I, ju I just don't know what the purpose of this 
this book is. I feel bad saying that because again, maybe this will speak to someone, but it really didn't speak to me. And I'm upset that it didn't mention anywhere on the back that like, this is what this book is about. I, like I'm looking in here and I'm not seeing any like trigger warnings anywhere. And I'm just like, I don't want to talk about that book anymore. I don't, I really don't. I would prefer to talk about Ties That Tether, which uh, still not the best. Um, sadly, like this video has gone downhill. Let's just, let's just like put it out there. I'm trying to stay upbeat and positive because I have some fun stuff that I'm doing after this video is being done filmed, but wow, these last two books are really hitting me. So again, this is a case of, I really wish that the important things in this book had been mentioned in the description of this book. I think it's irresponsible in a lot of ways to make these things plot twists or to make them something that is included. And in, I don't know how to say, okay, I'm just going to tell you what happens. Our main character gets pregnant after a one night stand. And I can also tell that there is going to be some mention of pregnancy loss and maybe death of a loved one in this book. And it's upsetting to me that that's not really mentioned at all in the synopsis. And I understand that that's supposed to be like the plot twist of this book and like, oh my God, look at how she deals with this stuff. A lot of people are sensitive to like pregnancy, pregnancy loss, surprise pregnancy in stories, especially like if you're dealing with infertility, I'm sure that would be upsetting to pick this up thinking it's one thing and then it's like not at all what you expected. That being said, I'm actually enjoying <laughs> the character relationships in this book. So this, I just absolutely didn't like any of the characters or the plot. This, I'm liking the characters. And while the surprise pregnancy is irritating to me, I'm not actually not enjoying the story. So the story is about our main character, Azere. Azere, I've got to, I am butchering the pronunciation of that, I'm sure. Our main character, Azere, as she tries to kind of navigate the situation that she's in. She gets pregnant after a one night stand to a white guy. And she's also being pursued by a guy from her past who's also Nigerian. She's Nigerian and her mom is like insisting that she marry a Nigerian man. And her dad also said like, don't forget your culture before he died. So she feels this like pressure to marry a Nigerian man. And I think that is an interesting enough plot. I think like I I'm liking the kind of balance and the juxtaposition of like culture and responsibility and also independence and desire to live your own life. I, I don't know why I'm speaking on this as if I'm some authority. I'm definitely not, but I'm enjoying that kind of aspect of this. I like her mother. I think her mother is like funny and interesting. And I would love to hear like more about kind of the family dynamics because we've only gotten a little bit of that so far, but I'm hoping that we get some more. <sighs> and then I'm actually liking Azire's love interest. <laughs> I think he's going to be the one she ends up with, the guy that impregnates her. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really doing a great job at like describing this book. I, like I'm just emotionally a little bit taxed after reading Pretending, but I am enjoying this. The audiobook is fun. And I really do like the sort of relationship that Aziri has with um, Raphael, I believe is his, is his name, because it's it's a lot more playful than any of the relationships that I've read in any, in any of these books. It's, um, I wouldn't say immature, but I just like the lightheartedness to the relationship. And I'm hoping that that does balance kind of the like surprise pregnancy aspect. And then also the other stuff that I'm anticipating and also saw as trigger warnings and reviews. So I don't know how to feel. I guess time will tell. And I guess we'll see how serious the other topics handled are. And like, if I think that it's like an appropriate inclusion in this book, given that it's not, you know, talked about anywhere on the description but I'm rambling at this point. I honestly, can I be completely transparent with you guys? I think I'm just gonna update you guys one more time. I'm not halfway done with this book, but I don't have that much left. And I have a lot of other um, things that I want to do today. <laughs> I don't wanna say besides reading, but yeah, besides reading. I'm gonna go finish this book. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna tell you how I feel about it and what books I like recommend that you guys pick up uh, at your local Target. Okay, so I am freshly showered and ready to talk about uh, Ties That Tether and the other books and kind of give you, you know, my final thoughts and recommendations. Ended up doing a little bit of yard work slash garden that's what I was like doing today besides reading and I decided that I was going to do my yard work while I listened to the rest of this audiobook which I thought was a really good decision because I ended up enjoying this book more than I probably would have since it kind of gave me something to do while I did the yard work. I don't know I will say that some of the elements of this book that I was not looking forward to ended up being a lot less um, important than I thought they would be and I do think that they brought our characters together. I don't want to really spoil a ton but I did say that there was um, death of a loved one and pregnancy loss in here and that's definitely true but it's not something that is um, super heavily emphasized or used as like a plot twist or like plot device really. I felt like it was used appropriately and it made one of our characters decisions and or secrecy kind of like make sense in the context whatever. And I think that given the kind of story that this was and the story that it was trying to tell, the surprise pregnancy element like was sort of important to the story. So I liked this book. I thought it was cute. Again, I mean, if you're someone who just hates surprise pregnancy at all costs, avoids at all costs, you're not going to enjoy this book. But I think 
I was willing to overlook that because the romance was really sweet and I really did like Aziri and uh, Raphael, so. I liked this book. I don't have anything like super profound to say. I think if I were to rate it, I'd probably give it like a three and a half. I liked it a little bit more than Lasting Standing. I, I compared the two because they definitely, you know, have that heavy emphasis on your family's opinions of your dating relationships, but I feel like this one was heavier on the romance, which I appreciated. I mean, I feel like when you pick up any of these illustrated covers, you never know what you're going to get in terms of, you know, is this a romance? Is this just like a rom-com? Is this really, really dark and hard hitting? And they're just using the, you know, cover as a front to get you to pick the book up. In this case, it was romance. It was cute. And I did like it. So that is the last book that I'm reading for this video. Let's briefly go through what I did read. I feel like I have been doing this video for months. I mean, I, I absolutely have been doing this for months, but I want to give you guys like my final thoughts, my final recommendations. So my favorite book, obviously, that I read during this experiment was Tools of Engagement. I mean, this is definitely going to be a favorite book of the year for me. Since reading it and since doing some reflection, I can definitely see its flaws. It's very, very heteronormative and like it just feels aggressively straight. I did really like the relationship between Wes and Bethany though and I just feel like it had that puzzle piece thing that I'm always looking for in a good romance. So I feel like if you see this at your local Target, maybe give it a go. I had a really good time reading it and I would not have picked this up had it not been for this video. So I'm really glad that I picked this one up. The next book I read was Lasting Standing by Lauren Ho. I had a really, really good time reading this honestly, I'm considering taking this Target sticker off. I'll decide after this video, but I'm actually considering taking the Target sticker off because I just look back on this with like fond memories. It was super fun and even though it wasn't super heavy emphasis on the romance, it was kind of fun just living in this world for a little while and I liked the escapist nature of it. Our main character Andrea is a little bit much at times, but I found her kind of endearing. So I really liked this. And again, I think this is one that if you're looking for something like kind of beach reading or you want like something for the summer, you're at Target, you see this, I would say pick it up. Next up, we have The Roommates by Rosie Dannon. This one has a very different feel from all of the other books. I think it reads, I don't want to say a little smarter, but a little bit smarter. And I think if you are someone who likes The Hating Game or books that have kind of a mutual pining situation going on, I think this is one that you'll really enjoy. And I'm glad that I finally got to get to this in this video because this is like a pretty hyped romance, I would say. Um, hyped and yet underrated at the same time. So again, I would say pick this one up. Pretending by Holly Bourne. This is the only one I think in this video that I'm going to tell you guys maybe don't pick this one up. It just really wasn't for me for the reasons I listed. And to be honest, I just don't know who this book really would be for if it interests you. If you like a little bit of cynicism, perhaps this could be a read for you. It just really didn't work for me. And then lastly, we have Ties That Tether by Jane Agaro. And I don't think I said, but I am going to be removing the Target sticker on this one and keeping this for my collection. Honestly, I think I'm going to keep all of these for my collection except for pretending because I just had a really damn good time doing this video. It was super fun. I'm having issues with the stickers. So I'm not going to pull it off right this instant, but I just had a really good time filming this. It was fun. It was exciting. It was everything I wanted it to be and more. I wish I had some profound thoughts to share. I usually have some like bold wrap up at the end of these videos, but honestly, I was just reading books. I had a good time and I wouldn't hesitate to pick up more romances from Target in the future. I think they have a pretty solid selection. Anyway, that's it. My easily influenced ass, you know, had a good time. When I read TikTok romances, not so much. If you haven't watched that video, I'll leave it in the description down below or in a card if I can remember to do a card, but I'm looking forward to doing more of these in the future. Painfully easily influenced and, uh, you know, sometimes it does pay off. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much and until next Sunday.